Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Ray Barreto. I am the Director of Client Services and Business Development here at CSI, a Moody's analytics company. I am pleased to welcome you to this webinar, What's Next? Your Future in Financial Services. Now, before we begin some housekeeping, today's webinar is being recorded. The ratings, financial reporting analysis, projections, and other observations constituting part of the information contained herein are and must be construed solely as statements of opinions and not statements of facts or recommendations to purchase, sell, or hold any securities. We ask that no one record this webinar without Moody's explicit written permission. And lastly, no one has permission to quote any of the comments made or questions asked by the webinar audience. All members of the audience are currently on mute. If you have a question, please use um, the Q&A box which is located at the bottom lower right-hand side of your screen. At this time, I would like to introduce our panelists for today's discussion. First, we have Marie Muldowney, Managing Director, Moody's Analytics, CSI. Next, we have Asunta Tatino, Assistant Director of Client Management, Moody's Analytics, CSI. Next, we have Timothy Hull. He's the Director of Practice Standards, National Sales and Practice Excellence at CIBC. We have Idris Steen. Head of Marketing, Moody's Analytics, and CSI. And last but not least, we have Trisha Summersby, Vice President, Managing Director, Branch Supervision at BMO Nesbitt Burns. Next slide. A number of you on this call are facing a transition into that next phase of life. Some of you have already made the decision to join the financial services industry, and we hope that this webinar provides additional insight to help validate your decision for those uh, for that decision. For those of you joining us because you are intrigued about a career in the financial services industry, we hope that this webinar inspires you to look further. Thinking about my own experience, I started in a background in, of IT. I joined the world of banking to get into technology, but I actually found myself in, uh, in the financial services industry for almost 25 years. I've never left. I continue to enjoy my time there. Our agenda today is going to cover a number of things. Marie Muldowney is going to be discussing insights for students entering the financial services industry. From there, we're going to talk about the uh, journey that Timothy, Idris, and Tricia has taken in their, in their careers in the financial services industry, where they started, how they kind of moved through uh, their careers, and where they are today. Um, but then we're going to have Marie talk about CSI credentials. And then we'll finish off with Asunta Tatino talking about how to take advantage of some of the features and benefits that CSI provides to uh, students and, and post-secondary institutes. Getting into our first question, I'm going to direct this question to Marie. Uh, Marie, in your experience, what is important for students to keep in mind when pursuing a career in the financial services industry? And do you have some insights on why students want to enter the field? Thanks a lot, Rui. So there are many opportunities in financial services. When we think about financial services, very often we think about well, the branch, the bank branch, or we think about our bank app, app, or moving around money. But we don't really think about the broader financial services industry. So the industry offers many possibilities. Clearly, there are client-facing roles, providing products and services and financial advice to customers, needing banking services, securities and investments, trust and estate services, and insurance. But financial services has so many other avenues. You can work in human resources, legal services, compliance, product management, project management, technology, accounting and finance, marketing, and the list goes on. The financial services industry is kind of a cosmo, is a, is a mini world of, of opportunity. So why do people choose financial services? Well, there is so much opportunity in so many different roles. It's well paid and there's great room for advancement and a fulfilling career. And as you move through your career, CS Thaya moves with you. So you start with a course, you get a certain license, you move on, you're able to work through your, the career path you would like to take with us to be able to get the courses you need to move to the next level. So decide what work you want to do, really. Do you want to work with people? Do you want to work in analytics or systems? Do you want to work with data? Just identify the role you need, Ruby, and uh, apply. So that's what I'd have to say about the experience. 
Thank you, Maria. I, I actually went through that same that same thing that you just mentioned. My as, as I indicated, I started my background in the IT world, and my ambition was to get into the technology um, department. But I kind of went through the retail banking side, kind of found my my footing, and then just never left. But it's funny that if I had wanted to, I could actually pursue a number of different careers all within um, the banking banking organization. I could work in a marketing department. I could have moved into the IT department. So it's it's really great to, to kind of have you uh, indicate that as well. Um, Marie, can you talk to us about some of the technical skills and the soft skills and how the two kind of work together to kind of round out um, an individual who is thinking about a career in the financial services space? Sure. Well, clearly you need technical skills because you need to understand the products. You need to understand how they work what they offer to clients, how to use them, and how they can benefit clients. And you need to be able to demystify them because very often products are complex. And so you need to be able to explain to the client how they work. And at all times, you need to have the customer in mind. And so you're trying to match customers' needs with the right products and services for them. And to do that, you need soft skills. You need to be able to listen to your client understand what they want, what are their goals, what do they intend to do in the future, what kind of money needs do they have. And you need to ask questions, clarify where they're going to make sure you understand, and then recommend solutions and explain the solutions to clients so they understand what they're getting into and are willing to take a journey with you in their financial services uh, route. And then follow up to make sure that things are going well. So you really want to be able to deal with people um, and, and be able to talk to them. And so any kind of experience you have working with the public, working in a restaurant, working in a store, any place where you, you're able to present and give your ideas, these are all areas where you can develop your soft skills. Even in school, when you get up to do presentations, imagine you're presenting to a client and, and give your presentation that way. So grow in your confidence in being able to present to people because it is really a people business. And even if you're doing a job that is not client facing, you still need to be able to talk to colleagues to explain where you're coming from. If you're in technology, explain what your technology is going to do and how it's going to work and how it relates to clients. So those are all really important elements for being able to communicate what you bring to the table when you're talking to either clients or internally. Marie, I have a second follow-up question for you. So mm -hmm. you've hired a number of people over your career and you know very successful folks on your team. How important is that thought skills in those in those first uh, introductory meetings with candidates? Well, when you meet a candidate, you want to see how they express themselves. Are they able to explain what they've done? Are they able to sell me on their story? Are they be able to? Are they able to um, to be able to highlight parts of their um, experience and be able to relate their experience to what they're going to bring to the table in this particular role? So yeah, the soft skills are really important. Um, you want to make eye contact with the people you are you are interviewing, and so all of those are indices on how this person will deal with clients. Thank you, Marie. I, I, it wasn't until I met you that, that that I, when I was going through a lot of that, that applications and interviews, I always sat so much on the technical side that I prepared myself to answer those very technical questions, and I sometimes didn't recognize that I had, you know, a little bit less of the soft skill requirement to kind of have that interview and create that confidence that you, that you mentioned. So it's really great to kind of hear how you blend mm. the two together, especially when you're meeting with uh, with new candidates. The candidates, yes. Um, my next question, so next slide. Now, based on what Marie has said, there's, there's obviously a journey that a lot of us take. Um, where they start their careers and where they kind of go and where they end are, are completely different uh, for, for each of us. Uh, what I'd like to do is direct this next question to both uh, Tim and Idree, and I'd like to have them kind of walk us through how they got into the bank, um, how they got uh, through their, their thoughts and process on where they wanted to take their careers and where they kind of see themselves potentially going forward at the, as, as they continue their journey. 
Timothy, can we start with you? Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be on the call. Uh, my name is Tim Ho, I'm the Director of Practice Standards at CIBC. Um, and you know what? I, I remember as an undergrad being really uncertain about uh, what the future held. And the, the funny thing is we'll always be uncertain about what the future holds to a certain extent. Uh, we live in a world that's transforming and being disrupted constantly by amazing things that have changed the world. Uh, in 2007, it was the first iPhone. Over the next few years, it's going to be uh, advanced AI. Um, you know, soon Idris and Rui won't, won't need to invite me as a guest speaker anymore. You can just go uh, talk to your toaster or something, right? Um, but being uncertain about the future doesn't mean you can't be as prepared as possible by standing on a strong foundation. So I want to share my career journey and then uh, a couple of things that you can start doing today to help you prepare for uh, an uncertain future for all of us. Um, I went to business school at the University of Ottawa. I was, uh, you know, a pretty typical student that uh, was working in retail at the time with uh, no real sense of what I wanted to do long term. And in fact, uh, my, my mom was working at a competitor bank at the time as a teller, uh, and I decided to give that a shot because why not? Um, so not much long term planning went into that. And honestly, I had figured it would just be another job. Um, so I put on a suit and tie, I printed off a bunch of resumes, you know, like we do, and then I walked into branches and asked to speak with the managers. And I had absolutely no idea that a career that's lasted almost 15 years now was awaiting me. Um, I remember when I was interviewing for the teller role, or as we call it, uh, CSR, Customer Service Representative, I came to realize just how much my retail experience was benefiting me. So. Tip number one, and this is something Marie kind of touched on briefly, is no working experience is wasted experience. A lot of people feel like they're in some sort of limbo until they get that, that dream job, and that's not true at all. Everything you do every single day at any paid or non-paid job, volunteer work, that's real experience, right? You're, you're working with real people, and it's really up to you to see that and to understand what skills you're building in different situations and then link back to those skills when you're in a situation uh, where you're selling yourself, like in an interview. I worked at a, at a restaurant for a while. You know, what does that have to do with my banking interview that I had? Well, a lot, actually. That's a fast-paced environment. It requires multitasking. Um, it requires customer service orientation, relationship management, sales, conflict resolution. So always understand what skills you're building in your repertoire, and it'll build your confidence by helping you realize your own competence. Um, when I was a uh, customer service representative, I began realizing you know, just how much our clients rely on the accuracy of our banking system. So from helping our clients resolve a bill payment issue with a merchant to preparing a, a bank draft to help close maybe what would be the biggest business deal of, of a customer's life. I started seeing how in banking, even at the most basic level, one of the main cogs that allows society's wheels to turn are the things that we do every day in every single role at a bank. Um, I was one of the top uh, CSRs in the country because I committed myself to being an expert in my own craft and then using that to help my team. I was also really interested in what the other roles around me did, not just in my own job. So from financial service representatives that help our clients with more basic financial planning needs to our financial advisors uh, that help our clients with more complex investment, credit, uh, estate protection, and uh, small business planning needs, or our uh, branch managers that lead our teams. I met so many helpful people that took notice of my enthusiasm and just took the time to help me out, show me the various career tracks that were available to me at CIBC. So uh, all that said, tip number two, understand your role and the ecosystem around you as well, because regardless of what role you're in, whether it's entry level or not, you first want to ensure that you're an expert in your own field, because that's the first step to adding value to your team around you. And then you want to understand what those around you do, because you can't help the team if you don't understand what the team does, right? And seeing the big picture and, um, and making the entire team successful is the foundation of leadership and is what will get you noticed over people who are only in it for themselves. 
So with this approach, I was able to seamlessly move into a financial service representative and financial advisor roles over the course of a few years. With the benefit of already understanding the fundamental expectations of what success looked like in those roles from all these helpful conversations I had with my with my team members. And then that's when I decided to take a really big risk. So I wanted to help contribute to our broader strategy as an organization at CIBC. But at the time, uh, this was before COVID, I had to move to Toronto to achieve this. So I made a very difficult decision to move away from my loved ones uh, in Ottawa, as well as leave behind my uh, portfolio, which was one of the most successful portfolios in the country. And I actually took a 60% pay cut to accept a temporary six month consulting contract at CIBC. So in other words, there was, there was kind of no turning back. So it was really for me all or nothing. So with that in mind, I, uh, I was promoted several times and a few years later found myself as the director leading our consulting and execution team. And since then I've had experience in uh, strategy consulting, project management, risk, compliance, technology, and even a resale integration in an international M&A. And I did this by applying the same two things that I mentioned earlier uh, that really helped me be successful in my branch journey. So uh, number one, understanding the transfer transferability of skills, like I was saying before. Um, you know what, on day one in Toronto, I felt like I had, I had absolutely no clue what I was talking about. But then one of my leaders uh, had a conversation with me that really helped open my eyes. He said, you have a tremendous amount of expertise to share because just days earlier, you were the one still sitting directly in front of our clients. No one else had firsthand experience that fresh. And then number two, understanding the team and how I can add value to the team. But let me tell you something, uh, having gone from sitting at the, uh, the teller's wicket to suddenly sitting at a boardroom with some of the bank's top decision makers was a very intimidating experience. So uh, this really leads me to my third and final tip. Um, understand yourself as a human being, and then more importantly, act on that knowledge. What are you passionate about? What are you good at? What are you afraid of? And why are you afraid of those things? Um, fear is a very important thing to understand for all of us because the most meaningful growth opportunities you'll find in life are shrouded in fear and in doubt. And the most successful people are the ones who take a deep breath and say to themselves, yes, I am scared. So I'll just do it scared. And some of the people I've mentored have said, you know, but Tim, I'm not, you know, I'm not brave like that. I'm not super confident. Uh, you know, I'm an, I'm an introvert. That's not me. And I asked them, so I asked them, you know, what, what is courage though? If a kid is really uh, afraid of a monster hiding under their bed and they, take a deep breath and they crawl under their bed and they check for themselves, you know, to me, that's courage. But if, if the parent comes in and checks under their, their kid's bed for them, is, is the parent being courageous? You know, of course not. It's the, it's the same act, but it's not courage when you're not scared. Right. So yes, um, there are people out there that are very brave and, you know, they just have no fear. And yeah, a lot of us might not be that brave, but bravery is not courage. Someone courageous is someone that has fear and does it anyway. Um, we can all find courage within ourselves. So, you know, the next time you're confronted with something, uh, whether it's in your personal or professional life um, that you're afraid of, remember that it's also an opportunity and it's going to be your decision to either seize that opportunity or, or let it float away. So um, try to find that courage within yourself and you can really change your own life and your career because really no one else is going to do it for you. Idris, I'll, I'll turn it over to you or, or Rui, back to you. Rui, I think you're on mute, sir. Sorry, Tim, I just wanted to kind of highlight the fact that you took a chance in joining the financial services industry in a role um, such as a teller, and then kind of looking beyond that role to kind of extend and expand um, your career to where you are today is an incredible idea of, of what uh, could be used in pretty much any career. Um, you can either stay where you are or you can look outside the box and figure out what, what that next piece to add to your knowledge, to add to, to your skill set, to get you to your next role. And it looks like where you started to where you are now, you kind of built yourself a career and it only looks to be growing uh, uh, 
a little bit more every 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 time you look outside that box. Um, Idris, um, if you'd like to share your story with uh, with everyone. Sure. Well, thanks everyone for joining today. Um, I, I do see a lot of questions around, you know, do I need to have previous experience in financial services to enter the industry? And I'm going to address that, um, you know, as part of my, my career journey. Um, so, you know, I know a lot of you have joined this call because you're really looking, um, you know, on how to start your career journey in the financial services. So I really want to share um, my personal story and offer you some advice. And while I'm speaking, I really want to encourage you to type any questions that come up um, and, you know, in our Q&A. And we have our moderator, Rui, and he'll ensure that your questions are answered uh, throughout the presentation. So, you know, before I started my journey in the financial services industry, I struggled. You know, I was in school. I didn't know what I would what I wanted to do. You know, I had colleagues of mine who were starting to get interviews at, at you know, different places. They were making money. Um, you know, my friends wanted to go out. I wanted to buy clothes and, and it was difficult. Um, so, you know, I found myself applying and, 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 and working in different retail jobs. You know, I worked in some clothing stores and some malls. Uh, I worked at the flea market a little bit growing up. Um, I even worked at um, an appliance store, um, which involved loading and unloading um, appliances from trucks to the receiving area. Um, it was very tough uh, to do all the things that I wanted to do. But when I look back at it, this experience, you know, it really ended up helping me um, get to where I am today. I learned a lot of things about interacting with customers and Marie touched on a lot of the these things you know soft skills um, so having experience out there interacting with with customers um, you know it'll really pay dividends later on so you know I'm here before I think it was 2010 2011 not knowing what I wanted to do and I look back at it and I really wish that there were seminars like this um, where I, I could have learned from other people's experiences. So what I really want to do is I really want to give back and, and help all of you um, start your journey and, and really get you um, to do the right things. So it all started, I was actually at a wedding, um, confused about what I wanted to do. And I met someone at the wedding who um, actually worked in a bank. I believe that he was a he was a branch manager. So at that time, I thought that wow, someone working at the bank must be really cool, must be very difficult to get into. And I didn't know I didn't know where to start. So he started talking to me about opportunities available in the industry and and how to get started. Um, so his advice was to go and take a licensing course. Um, so I ended up taking a course called uh, the Investment Funds in Canada. Uh, and, and what that course does it, is it allows you to um, work in the branch um, in, in a client facing role where, where you can um, deal with mutual funds and, and provide advice to to customers. Um, so, you know, my advice to you, you know, in addition to, you know, working on your soft skills, uh, you know, um, working on customer facing jobs is start, start with a licensing course. Um, and again, you don't need previous experience in the financial services industry to get started, right? So, you know, I went and did my course and I followed a similar path to Tim, you know, I went into different branches, spoke to different people and told them that, you know, this is a path that I want to go down. And I ended up getting a teller job. So 
um, I you know after one year um, working as a teller and and just to explain to you, you know what a teller really does is a teller is your first line of defense for people who walk into the branch. You know, you help them with their day-to-day uh, -day transactions, bill payments, and you help uncover their needs and um, you get them in front of other individuals that work within the branch uh, to talk about their financial needs. Um, so I ended up progressing from 2012 to 2015. I uh, ended up doing um, a senior financial services representative role. Um, so in this role, um, I met with clients, discussed their financial goals, helped them put different plans together, whether it was opening up a savings account, uh, helping them purchase a home, um, opening uh, education savings plan for their children. And, and these were very important things to customers, you know, life-changing things. Tim talked about it. Um, so in 2015, this is when, you know, I had a couple of years of experience working as a financial services representative. And the next step after that was um, to work in a more high net worth advisor capacity. So unfortunately, at the time, and I still don't have it today, but um, in order to progress, you need to have uh, the Canadian Securities course. So the Canadian Securities course opens up a little bit more doors, and Marie will talk about it later on in the presentation. So um, had I taken the Canadian Securities course instead of the Investment Funds in Canada course, I may have had more um, you know, opportunities um, within the branch world. Um, you know, had I decided to stay within the branch world, I would have had to write the Canadian Securities course. Um, so I had to make a decision on whether I wanted to serve clients and continue serving clients and helping them with their goals or maybe try something else um, within the head office space. Um, so the thing about head office, how it differentiates uh, how, how, how it's different than working in the branch itself is in the head office world, you're looking at processes to, you know, make it easier for the bank employees to do their job, but also enhance the customer experience. So I was fortunate enough to be in the branch um, for three years, and I learned a lot of processes, which helped me um, Help me stand out when interviewing for, for head office roles. So that takes me to um, 2015 when I started my first uh, head office role. So I continued to work um, at head office and I met with a lot of individuals from different teams to understand what they do and what types of skills and experience were required. And I really encourage all of you to to network, um, there's a lot of resources available. Um, you know, CSI has a lot of resources. The banks have different resources. There's a lot of job fair. Just go out there and really find out what you want to do and learn more about the roles. Um, and then I continued and had office um, until 2019. I took on you know bigger projects. Uh, leading different teams. Um, and then in 2019, um, I was fortunate to have an opportunity to come work for the Canadian Securities Institute. And the Canadian Securities Institute, Institute is the provider um, of financial training for banks. And all of the experience that I gained while working in the bank was directly transferable. So in my current role today, um, I'm responsible for um, overseeing CSI's marketing strategy, um, looking at you know, enhancing our customer experience. Uh, I work on creating operational efficiencies. And most importantly, I'm, I'm a firm believer in, in giving back. And I'm doing, um, you know, I'm working with the different teams here to make sure that you as students have the resources that you need to succeed and really find your individual career paths. So that's that's my piece here. 
Um, Rui, I'll pass it back over to you. I know there's a lot of questions coming in as well. Um, Idri, thank you. I, I mean, the great thing that I kind of liked about what you shared with your story, it's very similar to Tim. Um, you guys both started really in an entry level role. You, you got your, your foot in the door, you started as tellers, you kind of um, took your careers from there and you added all of the extra layers, and the extra knowledge. And you've basically grown with all of these interesting and, and very detailed roles within within the amount of time that you spent in the financial services industry. So the one thing I kind of wanted to hopefully have that resonates from, from both Tim and Idris' story is that where you start, where you go, and it's it basically summarizes what Marie said at the beginning is the amount of careers that you have once you get into the financial services industry is, is quite large. You can start here and then there and bounce around somewhere in the in-between. So thank you for sharing your journeys. Um, my next question is, uh, Trisha, uh, which credentials and skill sets do students need to get started and what industry segments are open to them? Thank you so much. And uh, it's just a thrill to be here with you all today. Um, I'm Trisha Summersby and, and I'm with a major bank, uh, Beeman Nesbitt Burns, and uh, I am VP and Managing Director of Supervision. I'll touch on that a little bit in a minute. I'm going to get to this question, but I thought maybe what I would do uh, for everyone on this call today is start out really talking a bit, layering in my story, because I think it's really important when I start touching on these pieces around credentials and skill sets. And I think we've seen a bit of that already with everyone's story. And, and I'm going to touch on these segments. So let me just start by the beginning uh, in saying, you know, congratulations to all of you for signing up for this session. For some of you, that's a big deal. You know, maybe you have no experience in the industry as we've touched on. And uh, maybe some of you are coming back into the industry and maybe some of you are in the industry and thinking about different opportunities there. I'll tell you my story. Uh, I really started out uh, in the industry. It was absolutely of no plan whatsoever. And I, I tell you that uh, very deliberately uh, because, you know, many people feel getting into the industry, they have to look like something, they have to be something, they need to have a background in finance in order to do these courses and have a career in this industry. And that is certainly not the case. I started out by literally starting as a receptionist. I had no idea what the financial services industry was all about. And back then, you know, this was some 35 years ago, I've been in this industry for that long. So uh, I started out really on that journey uh, as a receptionist. Um, you know, here is my experience. I walk into this at the time. Uh, we didn't have bank owned stock brokerage. So we really, it was a stock brokerage. So I didn't really know what that even meant. So I walk in and all I know is I'm greeting people and introducing them to their financial advisor at the time. And really that was uh, all that they, the services that he provided for clients was really driven around trading on the stock exchange. So I knew nothing about any of these things, but what I did know is I really enjoyed interacting with the people and I really liked the uh, environment. And so I was really in this wonderful uh, working environment. People were very warm and welcoming. And uh, I thought this was kind of fun. So I did that for a while. And then someone approached me and they sort of said, you know, uh, would you be interested in coming to work on the other side of this wall, on the inside, and uh, work with these individual teams. And it, I'll never forget, it was a role that you would float around and filling in for assistants who were supporting those uh, advisors. And I thought, well, that was kind of interesting. And what was really good about that experience is I got to you know, experience sitting with different uh, financial advisors and how they uh, were running their businesses and, and how they were serving those clients. And I really like the aspect of the interaction with those clients and, um, you know, what it, seeing uh, what it took for some people to be successful. And, and I could see uh, all the different aspects of that. Really, for me, then, I then got really interested in this. And of course, I was very curious. I was learning. And I think you heard with the other stories that we heard today, uh, especially with uh, Tim touching on being curious about the roles of the people that you were working around. And I became very curious about that. 
you know, so then really from there, my career, um, you know, did um, continue because then I had an investment advisor approach me and say, you know, rather than floating around, would you be interested in working on my team? And in order to do that, I, I needed to take a course and that course with CSE. And so I can, I can tell you at the time, I thought, oh, am I smart enough? Can I do this? I've never done a course like this before. And I have to tell you, uh, taking that course uh, has been pivotal because what it really did is it opened up a whole uh, career path for me. And I'm going to touch on some of the careers paths that, that I have had. And I'll, I'll tell you one thing very deliberately. I had no plan. I had no linear plan of what exactly I wanted to do or how I, where I want to end up. But what I, I spent my career doing is being very curious and interested. And so my evolution really was driven by that curiosity and interest. So I, as I say, I was uh, a sales assistant for some time, and then that evolved into, you know, um, training people that were coming on and training them on how to do the role. And then, hmm, would you be interested in managing a team of sales, you know, this assistant team uh, that supports advisors? And so I became a manager and it evolved into that. And in order to be a manager, I had to hire people. So in order for me to hire people, I had to understand what was involved in the role. And so the evolution after that really morphed into, you know, um, you know, a more senior role. So in, instead of being responsible for one location, I was responsible for multiple that evolved into a, a regional role. And then something very pivotal happened in the industry. Banks were allowed to purchase these investment firms. And I can tell you this was when I really saw the change in the industry. The industry really uh, pivoted into uh, a much bigger uh, world. And you've heard everyone talk about that today. And so when you think about the roles that sit within financial services, if you think about an organization like a major bank, and we've seen some people today on the call, CIBC, BMO, wherever you're from, you know, with these big firms, you have multiple departments uh, supporting really what it boils down to is a client or a customer. And really, there are clients and customers at all different stages of their life. We've talked about uh, the banking. When you go into a bank branch and you're a teller and you have some interaction, you've heard people talk about, you know, servicing on investments. But if you think about wealth management today, you know, there are so many different aspects of it. There are self-serve options where people can go in online and trade themselves. So that's called a discount brokerage kind of, but that's really all under this umbrella of financial services. So as you can see, it can be somewhat overwhelming because you have so many different options, but I would encourage you not to get overwhelmed by that. Getting your foot in the door, starting out learning, experiencing, and not worrying where so much it's leading, it's an evolution. And really, as I say, mine grew out of an interest. So as I became more interested in certain things, I ended up going back, going on to the advisory side you know, in this sort of associate role for many years. And so I took my WMEs, which is another course that allowed me to give advice to clients. And so, as you can see, uh, my evolution really grew. And, you know, I have to tell you, you know, that and then evolved into becoming a branch manager of advisors in, in a branch. And after that, I decided, as you've heard many of us ta talking about our stories, into another, um, evolution, uh, another journey, maybe I pivot and go onto the strategy side. My goal was really to learn about the different aspects about the firm and how it's run. And so when I say to you, you know, you think about my journey, um, you know, and you think about credentials, the skill set, the things that are critical about my story are, I took courses in order to allow me some other opportunities. Um, my, in terms of my, you know, that I needed those credentials in order to do some of those jobs. But even if I hadn't chosen a client facing job we've talked about, there are, those credentials are never lost. You know, I'm a lifelong learner, so I'm very passionate. And that's why I'm very excited to be here today. 
because I really believe there's no course that is a waste. You know, if nothing else, you learn about your own finances, you learn how to uh, manage your own, um, you know, financial lifetime and save for your future. But you can also help other clients and there's other roles. So let me just touch on that for a moment because, you know, I've talked about the credentials part. So, you know, these courses and you're going to hear a bit more about that. And then there's these skill sets and the critical skills that have really catapulted my career has been interacting with others, having good interpersonal skills, getting along with others, collaborating, really listening and understanding and absorbing, and also being open, open to new ideas, being open to um, opportunities that come your way. Again, may not always feel like a promotion. Sometimes you go sideways to learn something new. And so I wouldn't discount that in any way. And so I wouldn't worry about, you know, I always say to people, let your ego go apart and really focus on what gets you up in the morning and what do you like to do and what are you going to enjoy doing every single day and how are you going to contribute? And so the other thing that I really want to touch on is this thing about industry segments that are open up to you. So I've touched on them a little bit today. You think about the evolution of the industry and how that's opened things up. These big organizations, you know, I spent 35 years of my career in the same organization, but that I've had a very varied career uh, and enjoyed that. So, you know, the role I have today, you know, I have a role where I lead an amazing team that I'm so proud of. And, uh, you know, I would be nothing without that team. And we have this great collaboration. We interact. But I will say this as well. Every role that I have done previously with this has been integral in helping me understand people so that I am able to do the job I am today. So never think a job is a waste. Never think a course is a waste. Uh, it's a journey. It's not a destination. So... Um, you know, it's just this winding road and enjoy your ride. So I'll hand things back over to you. And I know you have some questions, so I want to certainly leave lots of time for that. Uh, thank you so much, Trisha. It's funny, I really enjoyed how you kind of segmented between what is a credential and the importance of lifelong learning, especially when you're in this industry and you're working with clients and coming out of your shell because that interpersonal skill plays such a huge part of your your day to day. Yes. Uh, in, in, in this industry. Um, my next question is actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this to Marie. So Marie, I have a two-part question for you. How does CFI help students get into the financial services industry? And how do CFI courses promote career opportunities? Well, I think um, if you listen to all our speakers, right, to Tim, to Idris, and to Trisha, they've all talked about where they started, and they didn't all start knowing exactly where they were going, and they didn't start knowing exactly what they were going to do, but they all at one point in their careers took courses, and I would say um, to anyone getting into the industry, if you can take your Canadian Securities course, it is the course to start with. I'll talk about the Investment Funds in Canada course in a moment, but really, um, <clears throat> For any course, what you're trying to do is make sure that you are competent. You are going to be responsible for people's money. And in order to be responsible, you need to have the knowledge to go in and offer the products and services that are important for those clients. So knowledge is power and knowledge is confidence. And I think all of these speakers today talked about the importance of building your confidence, no matter where you get it from, those are all pieces. So the ideal base is the Canadian Securities course. It's a foundation for just about everything. It opens many doors in the financial services industry. It's a two-part course with an exam after each part. Um, you can do it entirely self-study, or if you're in a college program, you're probably doing it with a professor and your exams are timed in there. People who are doing it on their own can have a year to do the course. And so you have time to take in this great knowledge that will give you really good insight into how the financial services industry works. And then, um, it'll allow you to get into investments and portfolio management. So if you look at this chart, for example, and let me talk about the investment funds course. So investment funds course is really focused in on mutual funds, um, more um, products that are sold through the bank branches. Very important course to have if you're gonna be in the bank branches. The CSC encompasses what is in the, in the IFC. 
And so the, the CSC is the broader course. The CSC will also allow you to get into areas that the IFC is not sufficient for. But if you're working in the bank, you can go on and do financial planning, go on up into wealth management and so on. If you do the CSC, you can also go into the banking world. You can go into the trust and state world and pursue your MTI, um, or you can pursue um, your wealth management or become an investment advisor. Um, and become a certified investment manager. So there are many paths ultimately leading to the fellow of the Canadian Securities Institute. And the fellow is kind of the pinnacle of, um, of, of career recognition and leadership in the industry. So as you move through the industry, whether you want to do financial planning or wealth management or investment advising, state and trust, any of those areas, we can, we can, have a, we can give you a program that will accompany you. And so even people working outside the industry, so even if you start in the industry and you eventually leave the industry, there are areas such as journalism, uh, investor relations, treasury, government, finance. So even if you take the course now and you get into another area, it's all very beneficial. So there's lots for you to do um, in your career. And I'll turn it over to back to Rui and Asunta. Thank you, Marie. Um, it's it's really nice to see how, you know, the the power of of certain courses leads to different uh, opportunities and and uh, broadens people's careers uh, in, in order to just get into them. Uh, so, to brings me to this to this question for you is: Can you explain how students can learn more about the courses that Marie uh, has just mentioned and how they can enroll in them? Yes. Thanks, Rui. So throughout the webinar, we spoke about the technical skills and the insights entering the financial service industry. For example, the Canadian Securities course and our designation pass, the technical skills. It is equally important to focus on your soft skills, as Marie mentioned. As you decide what you want to do, remember to bring all your experiences to the table. Recruiters are looking for the professionals who are client and people focused. Having both the technical skills and soft skills make you the ideal candidate. For example, let's take Idris and Timothy and Trisha's career journey and how they started. Your career may not always be a linear path. Sometimes you pivot from department to department, employment to employment. However, the important thing is to be curious and gain experience. These experience build character. So ask questions as Trisha mentioned, learn and seek out opportunities in the different roles and what these roles have to offer as you build your strong foundation and confidence. Which leads me to my role. In my role, I have the opportunity to meet and speak to university deans, professors, and students. Through these discussions, CSI has developed a post-secondary webpage for the students. The courses on the webpage, and as discussed in our webinars, were selected through our partnership and discussions with the colleges and universities throughout Canada. And they follow the necessary credentials needed for a career in financial services. So how do you get started? I invite you to visit, as you see on our page, csi.ca forward slash enroll. This page has all the necessary information to get you started. Plus you receive a 10% discount on CSI courses to get you started in retail banking, financial planning, insurance investment and wealth management. The first step you will have to do is you'll have to select your college or university, enroll, click on the drop down menu, scroll until you're select, you see your college or university. Then you'll have to select your college and university. Once selected, it will direct you to the next step of registering for the course. If you have a CSI profile already created, you will be direct continue registering as a student. If you do not have a profile with CSI, you will be asked to create a profile. These steps are simple, fast, and easy. If you run to any issues, CSI support is readily available to help. As I mentioned earlier, we also speak with, we have partnerships with professors and universities. If your college or university has one CSI, has one of our CSI courses embedded in the program and the college or university have a professor teaching a CSI course, for example, the Canadian Securities course, I invite you to please refer to the professor for the URL link, registration link and details. They will supply you with all the necessary information to enroll for those courses if a professor is teaching the course at university. On behalf of CSI, we wish you success in your studies and career. Back to you, Rui. 
Thank you, Asunta. Thank you for summarizing. Thank you for walking everyone through uh, where they can kind of um, take advantage of a lot of the, the discussions that kind of pointed to the education, getting that first mm -hmm. step and leveraging the partnerships that we have with the universities and colleges and being able to kind of push that back as, as, uh, as, as a benefit to uh, students and, and most folks joining us on, the, on this call today. Um, moving to our next slide, this is going to be our uh, question and answer uh, portion. Um, I do have a quick question that, uh, that was uh, sent to us that uh, I'd like to direct towards Tricia and Timothy. Um, so the question is, is, what are your opinions regarding many financial jobs being taken over uh, or substituted uh, by robo-advisors, automated services, and even artificial intelligence? And Tricia? Yeah, that's a good question. That's a really good question. And I will say this. I would say um, there was a lot of talk about that when robo-advisors started coming out and everyone was getting a little you know, how it was the impact. What we have seen uh, over the years is um, there's room for robo-advisors in addition to full service. I think pe some people still favor face-to-face uh, -face contact and some people like to deal what we call is a robo-advisor, which is basically a way to invest your money uh, in a discretionary basis with no phone calls back and forth to get your input and uh, based on your profile. So I would say uh, we still see um, clients who like that and we still see clients who like that full service is what we're seeing. But over to you, Tim, to see your perspective on that. Yeah, great, great point, Tricia. And, uh, you know, first I'd like to say that's a fantastic question. Uh, it's important for us to uh, try to understand our role in an evolving world so that we can help prepare for for the future, right? Um, so you know, let me let me ask you about replacement. When they when when they invented the first calculator, I'm sure there were many who said, you know, awesome, we don't need math teachers anymore or something. Um, you know, having been a project manager, uh, where you need to break down a seemingly very simple objective into tasks and subtasks, I can say that it's very it's very, very easy to underestimate the complexity of, of uh, even the most simple things. Um, you know, AI can assist in things like data analysis, uh, portfolio management, and even customer service. But at the end of the day, advisors still bring a very valuable uh, human element. So if you think about uh, skills like empathy, um, emotional support, relationship building, um, having been an advisor, I know that the soft skill element is an incredibly, incredibly important part of successful investing. Even the most skilled advisors um, uh, and investors can struggle with ensuring that their brains and their hearts are, are lined up. Um, and then to Trisha's point, there's, there's also many clients who will still prefer the element of human interaction when making complex financial decisions for their families. Um, so I think for, for organizations like, like the banks in Canada, I expect it'll be about offering options for our clients so that they can do what, su what suits them best. Um, so I think while AI will continue to play a growing role in the banking industry and others as well, um, look at it as something that will augment human intelligence rather than uh, completely replace it. Great, uh, th thank you for sharing that uh, very important insight. Um, this next question, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Marie and and maybe uh, Trisha to kind of jump in on. And it's very much in the same space. The question is, um, for somebody who's applying for a job, should they follow up that online uh, application with an in-person um, visit? And does that make sense, or is the uh, the online the the most important piece of that application and and uh, looking for a role? Yeah, so maybe I'll kick things off. I know it's very challenging, right, to get yourself, um, you know, recognized. You know, there's so many people apply online. And uh, how do you do that? What I try to recommend to people is try to network using tools as well, like LinkedIn, right, connecting with people, um, connecting with them in that fashion before you even get to the point of applying and get some um, get to know some people in the industry. 
help that helps me. That's helped my relationships have helped me a ton in getting into roles. Um, and then I'll just touch on this and we'll pivot to you, Marie. But like I would also say I've seen a number of comments in the chat about people who have experience who lived in another country, maybe are immigrants here, and trying to find that foothold. So I would just say language skills are in great demand right now. So if you have a particular skill with think outside, you know, your role, right, that you're applying for, what else can you bring to the table, that perspective? I would just zero in on that as well and highlighting that as well. Um, certainly in your resume as well, right? You want to call out language skills, a big attribute and things like that. But yes, um, not solely relying on the application. Do all of those things is my recommendation to you. But over to you, Marie, what are your thoughts on yeah, that? I I absolutely think you're you're right. It's it's about looking out for opportunities to to find places where you can go into a bank, um, and go and introduce yourself to the branch manager and the branch yes. you deal with. Um, don't be afraid and ask them what they can do to get what they can what you can do to get into financial services. Look for opportunities where the bank is opening a an, an event and attend the event and and network. So you really have to sort of start putting your hand out and um, and making yourself known. Exactly. And I would just add a layer on there. It's really about not being shy, right? Coming out and being able to say, I'm really interested in learning about the industry. I, you know, I'm really looking for an opportunity and um, I'm willing to come in and learn at entry level or if you're trying to break into that industry and not, you know, letting people know you're open to whatever is available. Um, and I guess this, uh, I'm going to ask, um... This is our final question, and I'm going to turn this over to Tim. And Trisha, if you want to jump in as well, I've got a question here that says, how can the same successes in the financial services industry be achieved with a non-business degree, somebody in an arts degree? How do they kind of go about um, looking at the financial services as a place for their careers? All right. Well, I'll kick things off because you're talking about me. So if you go to my LinkedIn profile, you're going to see I do not have a finance degree. OK, so I am I'm living proof that you do not need that in order to succeed. Um, you know, I, I have a love for learning. So, you know, and let's face it. Um, I also see that some people in the chat have challenges with some courses. If you fail something, don't give up. Don't give up right go for it again and try and don't give up if you really believe in what you want to achieve um don't let those things worry you you know you can overcome those things with support but over to you tim to, to give your insights yeah I, I echo your thoughts trisha i mean it all it all goes back to understanding the the transfer transferability of skills um there's so much you get out of learning uh, outside of what you're specifically learning, um, the the people you interact with on a daily basis, how you how you conduct yourself, how you communicate. In fact, if you're doing an arts degree, there'd be likely a, a, a big focus on you know on writing and communication. Those are incredibly important fundamental skills that will make you successful in any role in any industry, uh, banking or otherwise. So always think back to um, you know how do my my skills as a human being transfer to the the position that I'm trying to apply for and you'll you'll make yourself successful. So um, you know don't underestimate your own capabilities. Yeah and, and I'll just add on like as Tim talked about earlier, you know there's so many different roles within the organization remember you can take the CSC as your final foundation um, course to learn about the industry, but there's marketing and you know you talked about that right about your journey. There's marketing, there's all kinds of different things. You don't have to be client facing financial advisor. That's not just the pigeonhole uh, that you have to be in. I um, want to thank our panel, our panel members for providing incredible insight. Uh, this does conclude our event. If you have any additional questions, please email us at designations at csi.ca. We encourage you to enroll in the CSC or the IFC by visiting csi.ca forward slash enroll. A replay of this event will be available in the coming days. Thank you for attending. Have a great day and good luck on your path to a career in the financial services.